Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering the lymphomas. I'm going to be going over the differences of um, Hodgkin's versus non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the pediatric patient. Before we get started, guys, as always, I'm going to ask you to please help support this channel. I'm almost at 100K, so I'm ha asking you to please help me get there. Help me show up on more students' pages so they can know about me. How can you do that? Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and help that algorithm going. Comment. Comment in the section. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover extensively. Scroll through the comment section. Look for some resources and don't be selfish with your resources, guys. This channel is all about helping you pass. So if you have something that can help, an, when I say something, I'm not talking about that type of something. Don't do that on my channel. But I'm saying if you have maybe nursing notes or maybe a, you know of another good resource, share it in the comment section. It might help another student. Okay. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website. And oh, my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, let's get started. Lymphomas. Look at what it says here. Hodgkin's lymphoma. First thing I want to show you to my left, you see a smiley face. Why is there a smiley face? Because the prognosis for Hodgkin's lymphoma is much, much better than non-Hodgkin's. Okay, that's why you see the smiley face. Because one of the things you have to remember the difference is Hodgkin's has the better prognosis. Okay, the survival rate when it comes to Hodgkin's lymphoma is about 95%. It has a better prognosis than non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. All right, so Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, its incidence is age-related. In the United States, there's a strikingly increased incidence in adolescents 15 to 19 years old. This part you also need to, you need to know right here, Epstein-Barr virus. The Epstein-Barr virus is thought to have a role in causing Hodgkin's lymphoma. Don't say I didn't warn you, you need to know that. The risk of Hodgkin's lymphoma is increased among individuals with immunodeficiency and those who have a history of Hodgkin's lymphoma among immediate family members. Those who have first degree relatives are at increased risk for having Hodgkin's lymphoma. Those who are immunocompromised, such as the HIV patients, those patients with AIDS, or if a patient is, you know, they have a condition where they have to take a long term steroids remember steroids what, what do they do they decrease your inflammation they um but they put they decrease inflammation but they mask the signs of um, signs and symptoms of infection and it could cause what um it could cause the patient to be immunocompromised so that will place the patient at high risk for hodgkin's lymphoma make sure you know that Hodgkin's lymphoma originates in the lymphoid system and primarily um, involves the lymph nodes. It predictably metastasizes. That means it spreads, okay? It metastasizes to non-nodal or extra lymphatic sites, especially the spleen, liver, bone marrow, lungs, and mediastinum. Massive tissues and organs that separate the lung, including the heart and its vessels, trachea, esophagus, uh, thymus, lymph nodes. Although no tissue is exempt from involvement, it can go anywhere. These are just the main places that it tends to spread when it does spread, okay? Let's go over diagnostic evaluation for Hodgkin's lymphoma. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Where's my mouse? Look what it says, biopsy. Biopsy of one or more peripheral lymph nodes is used to establish histologic diagnosis. The presence of Reed-Sternberg cells is considered diagnostic of Hodgkin's lymphoma because it's absent in other lymphomas, but it can occur in infectious mono. This is important. Let's not skip over that. The presence of Hodgkin and Reed Sternberg cells. That is considered diagnostic. We see that we're like, oh, it's Hodgkin's, okay? Therapeutic uh, management, I'm not reading all of that. I'll tell you right now what it is, chemo and radiation. That's your therapeutic management. Let's look at nursing interventions for the patient. The most common side effect of extensive Irradiation is fatigue. The patient's going to be very tired afterwards. Lack of energy is especially difficult for adolescents because it prevents them from keeping up with their peers. Remember, guys, 
just like the work of the child is played, that's how they learn about their environment. The work of the adolescent is what? Socialization and self-identification. They figure out who they are through their social groups. So this is a big problem for the adolescents, them not being able to keep up with their peers. That is going that can inhibit or slow down that milestone that they need to reach for the socialization and self-identification. Parents should observe for such behaviors such as extreme fatigue at the end of the day, falling asleep at uh, the dinner table, inability to concentrate on homework, or increased susceptibility to infection. Regular bedtimes and periodic rest are important, especially during chemotherapy, because they will have just general fatigue. But remember, again, socialization is very important for the adolescent. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, you see the sad face, prognosis is not as good. Risk factors include infection with Epstein-Barr virus, inherited um, immunodeficiency, DNA repair syndromes, and previous cancers will place the patient at risk for non-Hodgkin's. Staging prognosis. A favorable prognosis is defined by young age. The younger they are, the better their prognosis tends to be. Low stage, low stage without mediastinal involvement, low tumor burden, and good response to initial therapy. The most effective treatment regimens result in a cure of 85 to 95% with limited disease involvement, and 70 to 90% of, of children with extensive diseases are cured. The clinical manifestations, many of those signs and symptoms that we see in Hodgkin's lymphoma will also see in the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Diagnostic evaluation, surgical biopsy, same, biopsy. Therapeutic management. Because non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is generally considered to be widespread at diagnosis, and by the way, guys, that being widespread at diagnosis, that's why the prognosis isn't as good as Hodgkin's lymphoma, okay? Because non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is generally considered to be widespread at diagnosis, most, treated, most children are treated with a combination of uh, chemotherapy. And here I wrote treatment must be aggressive. Why? Because by the time we figure out that the, the this patient has non-Hodgkin's, it's already spread. So we have no choice. We have to be aggressive with chemo and radiation. That's your Hodgkin's versus your non-Hodgkin's. If you haven't done so already, well, actually I haven't made that video. I will. I have another video that I'm going to make um, as an extension of this video It'll be coming soon. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought about this video, the differences between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or what I've covered already, but you'd like to see me either cover it extensively or maybe um, do a video where I'm actually making um, going over questions and teaching you how to answer those questions and understand the rationales. If you can, if you can support this channel by sharing this um, video on your social media platform, or maybe with a friend, a colleague, a coworker, a classmate, a nursing instructor, and just help my channel grow. If you can, I would really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.